Hi there, my name is Charlotte Reeves. I'm from Unleashed Education and you've tuned in to another editing toolbox video. In these editing toolbox videos, we share one little tip, trick or technique in Lightroom or Photoshop that's going to make your pet photography editing process easier or better. So in this video, we're gonna be creating a matte look image. So what is the matte look? So some might call it a fad, some might call it a style. I think it's a really interesting look to explore, but it has to be the right type of image. So I find images that work best are those that already have a really good tonal range. So looking at the histogram of this image here, you can see that there is information in the image all the way from the very deepest blacks to the very brightest highlights. There's no gaps at the left-hand side or the right-hand side, which corresponds to the shadows and the brightest highlights in this histogram here. So as you can see, I've already done a fair bit of editing to this image. This was the raw file. I've taken out this pipe. I've done a lot of work in getting more light into little Enzo's face here. And I've also done some painting with light. So I've darkened the edges and I've really worked on getting the viewer's attention onto Enzo's face. So I think the image is looking pretty good, but, but let's take this into Photoshop and I'll share with you my preferred method for creating a matte look image. So because creating a matte look is to do with adjusting the tones in an image, there's a number of different ways that you can achieve that. You can actually do it back in Lightroom using the tone curve and you can use levels or curves here in Photoshop to achieve the look. My preferred method, which gives the most customizable look and is probably easiest and the least fiddly is using a gradient map. Now to add a gradient map to this image, we would just go to the layers palette here and Click gradient map. Notice this is different from gradient. Gradient is a different thing. You wanna select gradient map down the bottom here. Now, how the gradient map works, it actually maps the tones in the image from the darkest to the lightest onto a new set of colors, so a new gradient. So if you have a look at the properties for this gradient map adjustment layer here, if you can't see this properties palette, just make sure you go to window and make sure it is ticked here. So if you have a look at the gradient that it's used, I'm just gonna click on the gradient here. It shows you that it goes from darkest black all the way to brightest white. Now it's taken all the tones of the image and it's applied a grayscale tone to that. Now this is actually a kind of an interesting way of creating a grayscale image or a black and white image. Now to create a matte look image, instead of going from black, darkest black to brightest white, we want to reduce the range of tones in that gradient. So instead of black, we might choose a very dark gray and you can see this immediately updates on the image. And instead of pure white, we might want to choose a very, very light gray. So already you'll see this has created quite a nice range of tones here. And it's just because it's mapped those existing tones into the image onto this new gradient. So let's just click OK. Now we don't wanna end up with a black and white image. So this is why we're going to add a blending mode to this layer. So let's choose the luminosity blending mode and have a look at the image now. Let me just turn this gradient mount off. It actually helps to refer to the histogram to understand what's going on here. So with that adjustment layer off and histogram, again, if you can't see that, you'll just need to go to window and histogram. Also recommend make sure it's on expanded view. Now with that adjustment layer turned off, you can see that the range of tones go all the way from the very left-hand side to the very right-hand side. We've got a full range of tones from darkest blacks to brightest whites. Now let's turn that adjustment layer on you'll see that it's remapped all of the tones. Instead of going from blackest black to whitest white, it's gone from kind of like a slightly grayish black to a slightly grayish white. Now, I actually really love the look of this. I feel like it compresses all the tones into a smaller tonal range, and in doing so, makes the colors a lot richer and gives the image a smoother appearance. It gives it a really film-like look that works really well for this style of image that has a lot of contrast, but also has a lot of dark tones and bright tones in it. 
So if you don't want to apply the full force of this effect, you can just select this layer and change the opacity. Bring the opacity down to a level that you're more comfortable with. Another thing that you might like to do is use the mask that's included with the adjustment layer and actually go in and brush the effect off certain parts of the image. In this case, we might brush it off Enzo's face a little to help bring back some of that contrast in that area. So we just need to select the mask, choose the brush, Make sure it's got a nice big feather on it. So I always take the hardness all the way down on the brush. Make sure it's a black brush. You can press D on the keyboard to give you default black and white foreground and background colors, and then just X to swap those over to make black your foreground color. I also like to make sure the opacity is at 50%, just in case we don't want to entirely brush that off the face. And I'm just gonna brush this off Enzo's face. And then I'm actually going to go into his eyes, change the opacity of that brush back to 100% and completely brush it off his eyes. I really want those eyes to stand out. So let's just turn that off and on again. I really do like the effect that this creates. I hope this has been helpful for you and I'm super keen to hear if you've tried this and how you found it works for your images. If you like, you can share your results with us. Just go to the Unleashed Pet Photography Education Facebook group, request to join the group and please post your images in there so we can chat about them. I'll catch you for another Editing Toolbox video soon. Thanks for watching.